Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. Now we want to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Now on Wednesday, we had Walter Hoy on our show, and he is the CEO of a wonderful foundation called Issues for Life. Issues, the number four life foundation you could go to his website issuesforlife.org and it was wonderful to have walter on the show and to hear um, all that he personally experienced as an african-american man all the injustices of being african-american experienced it too right Going no the, one, well right. anything that the father goes through the whole family goes through right right um, many a day our kid went to jail to pick you up out of jail <laughs> and and their whole thing was if we get daddy out of jail then we'll go out to eat we, right. we turned it into a treat we turned the negative into a positive okay. um, but the beautiful his sharing what happens to us when and you stand for the culture of life. And I don't care if you're black or white, rich or poor, old or young, um, the injustices that they will perpetrate upon you are real. So people say, well, I don't want to pay the price. I don't want to step up to the plate. I, this isn't my issue. This is a political issue. This isn't spiritual. Yeah. This isn't a human life issue. Um, well, yes, it is. It's not a political issue. It's a political issue in the respect that we yeah. work at changing the policies and the laws. But the, the issue is of the heart. It's of life. And God is the author of life. I wanted to read uh, kind of the overarching statement for Walter's uh, ministry, Issues, the number four Life Foundation. He says that the foundation targets and works directly with black American leaders nationwide to strengthen their stand against abortion on demand and resolve the questions surrounding the bioethical issues that impact our humanity. We are committed to protecting both the civil and human rights of the child in the womb by recognizing the inherent dignity and unalienable rights of all members of the human family so that in law, and in practice, every life is valued. So that's their mission, that's their statement. And you know, there are so many African American for Life groups now, like civilrightsfortheunborn.org, blackgenocide.org, learninc.org, blackprolifecoalition.life. And so th there may be a few media outlets that are telling you, but the movement is growing within the African American community and we can be greatly encouraged. It's always been in the heart of African American people, but I think got hijacked a little bit um, politically, but I think it's making uh, a resurgence right. now. And we know that in we're all abortion clinics, most of abortion clinics are built in the African American community because they are targeting an audience. Yep. Our clients, we run the Pregnancy Medical Center, 80% of our clients mm -hmm. are African American girls between the ages of 19 and 24. And so some of our clients come to us thinking we are an abortion clinic and we really get to minister to them the truth all of their options and the love yeah, of God. It's past time for the abortion industry to lay off the African American community and the Hispanic community and every community. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guest is Walter Hoy. He is the CEO of a wonderful foundation called Issues for Life Foundation. You can go to his website, issuesforlife.org. And on our previous show, we talked about your book, which was wonderful, and you were telling us of your sufferings, your miseries, <laughs> and your sorrows because you said yes to the yes, babies, yeah, you yes. said yes to women, you said yes to the culture yeah, So I hope that life. everybody will watch part one, because you know, your story, your testimony, uh, is just very, very powerful. And I think it really emboldens people, you My know? My goodness. When you stare down, you know, 
four-year possibility for holding a sign that says, you know, we love you and we love your baby. And, uh, but, you know, it just tells you the extent. I, I've often said, maybe it's a bit extreme, you know, my years of working the pro-life right, movement, a lot of time right. out on the streets and, you know, I've been arrested as well and s sued for like $33 million. And I said to Joyce, if these people could kill us, I think they'd kill us. Right. Yeah, some right. of them, you know, I was probably, might be right. extreme, but it's like, right. but it is that thing, like, we're involved in with, you know, taking the lives of these babies, and like, you're really in the way. We want to eliminate you. I mean, to give a guy exactly. like you and, and your reputation and the cameras there and still say four years, like, so how could somebody do that? But mm. they're that, this hell bent on stopping the movement. Absolutely. Absolutely. But they won't stop it. <laughs> no, they won't. It's of God. Yeah. If it's of God, it'll prevail. You, you, know, you may kill this man, you might do something, but you won't be able to stop God. No way, no way. That's good. Share with us about your mission. Now, I read that at the beginning of the show, that you're targeting working directly with the black American leaders nationwide, mm -hmm. strengthen their stand against abortion, demand and resolve the questions surrounding the bioethical issues that impact our humanity, committed to protecting both civil and human rights, recognizing the inherent dignity and unalienable right of all of its members in law and so on. So tell us about this target, you, the aim, why the African American community? Well, number one, the, there are black pastors in every city I visit, and I travel a lot all across the nation, and they say, Walter, we know that abortion is wrong. We know that the child inside the womb is a human being. We know that that child in that mother's womb is a person, but we don't know how to talk about it in our community, in our pulpits, in our churches. Will you help me? So the Issue for Life Foundation is dedicated to that. And we go all over and we actually help the brothers that really want to do it, do it in a way that allows them to be successful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so what do you think, what, what, what aren't they getting? Like, when we're pastors, when you're out there and you're preaching the gospel, you know conversion, you know repentance. Right. But why don't we say the A word in oh, our, from the pulpits? Why, my why, why, why are they afraid to say that? Well, the number one reason why black leadership rejects the pro-life movement is that black leadership is post-abortive. And what I mean by that is that there's an abortion in his life somewhere could be the mother, could be the wife, could be the son or daughter. If he's a black pastor, probably his entire congregation is post-abortive. When you look at wow. the numbers surrounding abortion and its impact on the black community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a huge point to remember, not only in the black community, but in every community with now 60, approximately 60 million, God help us, abortions mm. in the United States of America. Mm. That when I first started about you know, speaking about pro-life and about abortion, you know, I didn't include this whole post-abortive wound that's mm -hmm. there in so many of us, in our families and everywhere, right, right. particularly in the black community. So we always have to speak as if we're speaking to someone who's had an abortion or they know somebody who's had right. an abortion. And if we don't address this, it's hard to hear. I mean, they're in their own panic state or they're filled with that guilt, that shame, that trauma. So the point you're making, not only for the black community, but for every community, that we need to speak as if we may very well be speaking to someone who's had an abortion. Exactly, you've got to speak with love in your heart and you've got to understand the impact. If I just use the abortion industry's data, Alan Guttmacher yeah. Institute, according to the Alan Guttmacher Institute, 28% of all abortions are performed in my community, but you gotta wait. We're only about 12, 13, 14% of the population responsible for 28% oh my goodness, it's disproportionate. Well, there we have a picture on our monitor um, of you with um, an endangered species with a newborn baby in the back, right? <laughs> right? With an African baby, because they are an endangered species. Because how how many women, the stats are one in every four yes. women yes. have had an abortion. Yes. And what does that look like in the African-American community stat-wise? Oh my goodness, uh, uh, again, when you consider we're only about 14% tops right. of the population right. and 28 percent of all abortions you begin to get the picture but hold on about half of us are women so now you're looking at about six or seven percent mm -hmm. responsible for 28 percent of all abortions in the country but I'm still not done yet when you consider a child bearing age from 15 to 44 now you're looking at about 
three mm percent, -hmm. responsible for 28 yes. percent of all abortions in the country. Mm -hmm. It really is a genocide. It really is a holocaust in our right. community. Well, this is an important way, aspect, as you've been sharing, that there are a number of black leaders that know in their heart of hearts, if you pull them away and you don't make right. it on TV, and they're saying, you know, we get it, we know what's going on, yet we don't know how to articulate this. I think that's a, that has to be a part of the articulation, that what's happening to us being done by the abortion industry and our buying into it is something that the Ku Klux Klan never could have done. Oh, <laughs> Right, no. and so we all know about the Klan, we know exactly what to say about the Klan, we, we don't stutter about that. But look what's happening here. I mean, this is more devastating than anything that's ever happened to our community. So how do we speak about this to be a strong community, a life-affirming community? That, that Bible verse that says, the man who has his quiver full will not cower <laughs> back when he's right. met at the gate. Right. Like, we need sons and we need daughters. We need the principle of multiplication. This seems to be very important to articulate for the black leadership to say we want to be a strong community. Part of that means that we have human beings, that we have right. children that have come forth. There's no question about that. If you look at some of the data from the Tuskegee Institute regarding the Ku Klux Klan, we're talking about from 1882 to 1968, we're talking about 3,446 brothers were lynched, okay? Black men were lynched. Oh my goodness, but the abortion industry in my community alone overtakes that number in less than four days. Right. And so it is a huge impact. Now what we do is that we focus on the leader and we take pastor and wife. If I only have one, you can't come. He's got to bring his wife with him. And we take them to a secret location yeah. and we pour into their lives for four days straight. And I can tell you, at the end of those four days, they've moved from here to here. Right, they've moved from broken to wholeness, exactly. right? But you have to, the problem is, is that you can't give what you don't have. And if you're broken, you can't heal someone. Exactly. And so there exactly. they sit in the pew, broken women, men yes. and women, good yes. Yes. women. Oh. Holy, I mean, made in the image and likeness of God who've made a poor life choice, but they stay stuck in their brokenness and they cannot be set free until someone leads them to their freedom. Exactly. And when you understand that, you begin to see, where, oh my goodness, I need to speak to the heart. Mm -hmm. I need to get to the heart of the matter. And when you're able to do that, at that point, you're able to be much more successful mm -hmm. than you would be otherwise. Right. Part of getting to the heart, as you said, is that you've got to deal with, I'm guilty. Mm. <laughs> right? You know, I, mm. I, I, I've participated. Absolutely. I paid for one of my grandkids or child's abortion I'm a minister and I and so Satan just guilts them you could never speak about this right. well you have to justify what you're doing but you get them at a point maybe where they're willing to listen so a lot of your ministry is ministering healing or maybe right. they weren't directly involved but they said to so many people in counseling I wouldn't do it but you have to do what you're gonna do I mean I said that once you know and I regret it deeply I did that and I'm Mr. Pro-Life here you know and so what right do I have to speak at all you can, those who are forgiven much, love much. That's why you get to speak. Because those exactly. who are forgiven much, love exactly. much, you'll be the best exactly. witness because you understand somehow, some way you were duped and you participated. Right. You're right. going to be merciful because right. you, you, you know, not that you have to do that, but so many have. Oh, my goodness. So then these people are set free. Absolutely. And when you understand that's what needs to happen, it's not so much the big conference, the big seminar, but when you understand there's a personal reason, when you understand that, unfortunately, it's, Planned Parenthood's talking points that allow mm -hmm. them to sleep at night. Right. When you can get to the heart of the matter, at that point you can begin to share the message of Christ and the truth and you can get through to the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it really is a matter, I think in the African American community as in, in Af white churches too, the, sh the sheep will follow the shepherd. Right. Uh, when we got involved in the pro-life movement, half our congregation went to jail. The other half bailed us out and bonded wow. us out. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But it, you have to lead. And so in, in your organization, your foundation, where you are setting the captives free in leadership, right. then you get a whole you know, father and mother in the church, and then you can lead the sheep to their freedom and healing exactly. and get them involved and say, okay, now we're woke, now we gotta show up, now we gotta exactly. do something about it. Exactly. Because most of it is the guilt is just that, you know what, I didn't do anything. I knew it was happening and I just did nothing. Maybe I didn't even participate, but I just wasn't, I wasn't on the God's team in that arena. Exactly, exactly. And it's not 
until you understand that's the number one reason they're post aboard. They're, they're feeling that, that guilt and they're not finding any help. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. not until you understand the reason why they say no, you won't be able at that point to put together the best strategy to help them say yes. Mm -hmm. wow. And it's beautiful that you're that man because you paid a great price. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that you bring great trust right? I oh, mean, you, they're saying, I, I can trust this brother, look absolutely. what he's done, right? What other offerings are you offering through your ministry? Oh, Projects oh, or? Oh my goodness, well the one was that under that modern day version of the Underground Railroad, it, that's been so... Underground similar. Railroad? Yeah. I thought that modern, was years back. What's well it? it was, but it's a modern day version now. <laughs> what is it? I, I, I'm t it it's, a, it's where we take them to a secret location, we take them for four days okay. at okay. no expense to the pastor none whatsoever. You see, I can only talk so much in his office. Right. I can only so, talk so much in the city. He's a popular pastor. Everybody knows him. Probably the waiter or waitress is probably a member of his church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In order to get that intimate conversation mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you can get right to it, you need to take him away from that. So we take pastor and wife away for four days. Nothing. Mm -hmm. No expense to them. And we pour into them. Let me tell you, one time on the very first day, we had a pastor get up and confess his sin for the first time in mm -hmm. front of his wife. Mm -hmm. That's how much the anointing mm -hmm. of the Lord, but that's because we were actually getting to that personal arena, right. that intimate conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. <sighs> Did you feel like when you were going through what you were going through, compared to where it is now, mm -hmm. the support that you could have had, the support right. you're giving, mm -hmm. what's the difference between those two things? Because so many people are just, they're asked to leave by their congregations, or maybe they went about it and said it in the wrong way, just kind of splashed up there. Right. But to have support like this and to talk it through, how does it differ from when you were going through what you were going through to now, support? Well, at the time when, when I was going through it, there was no support whatsoever. And if it wasn't for the fact that I was in a position to actually do something about it, that we actually started doing something about it for the very first time. Now, w how it's different today is that there's been so much truth sent forth about it. There's no question the abortion industry targets black America. There's no question, even their own data confesses that, oh my goodness, you guys are disproportionately affected by this. There's no question that they're right there in our communities. And so now we're looking at the effects and it's clear. Mm -hmm. We're going to pause at this point. We're speaking with the Reverend Walter Hoy. Issues, the number four life foundation. Issues, the number four life dot org. Plenty more to come. Hope you're being encouraged. Don't go away. Well, we're visiting today with Walter Hoy, but first, we're going to go straight to Rome to visit with Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what are your thoughts on Walter's message today? Well, hi, Jim, and hi, Joy. It's always good to be back with you uh, this week, and you really have a fascinating guest, Walter Hoy, and he's a, a black voice in the pro-life movement, and he has suffered so much because of being that. He has gone to jail because he was a voice, a black voice, at an abortion clinic. And I was fascinated to learn that when he first spoke at a clinic, he had been invited to come as a, quote, new face, a black face. But why? Because most of the women going into the clinic were black. And so what would he as a black man be more believable? Obviously, we were, uh, that w was to be seen. So the idea of a black voice for black women piqued my curiosity. And I also learned an interesting fact from Walter's website, which is the Issues for Life Foundation. This is awful. Since abortion was legalized in 1973, more black American babies have been killed by abortion than the total number of black Americans, black American deaths from all other causes combined. So I didn't have a lot of, of time this weekend to do some research, but I did some, because I was curious about the statement, black voices, uh, here's a black voice for black women. Were there Asian voices for Asian women uh, asking for abortion? Were there Hispanic, are there Hispanic voices for Hispanic women? 
Are there statistics out there for these? I couldn't find them. Are there statistics out there by any chance for religion? Catholics, Christians, Muslims, Jews, other faiths for who have, who uh, as members of those faiths have abortion. So uh, if there are statistics, as I said, I didn't find them, but it would be interesting to know that if there are more abortions in one certain demograph, like color, uh, it'd be interesting to know why. So I just have to say kudos to, to Walter for his work because he's working with other black leaders in America, obviously in the, in the pro-life movement and urging them to be pro-life. And as he himself says, allow me to quote, he's working to strengthen their stand against abortion on demand and resolve the questions surrounding the bioethical issues that inflict our humanity. We're committed to protecting both the civil and the human rights of the child in the womb by recognizing the inherent dignity and unalienable rights of all members of the human family so that in law and in practice, every life is valued. So, Walter, keep up the good work. We're praying for you, but right now, back to you. Joan, thanks so much for your encouragement uh, for Walter. Yes. And it's beautiful yes. just to look into beautiful. his face. Walter, we just have a, a couple of minutes. And I just want to turn it over to you. It's been so great just to be with you, to hear your witness to life, somebody who doesn't kowtow to the power of government, and even those within the church that would say, hey, buddy, you're doing the wrong thing. Face four years right in the face and still you know, do what you need to be doing. Um, Tell me about, do you have hope for the movement? Do you have hope for what's going on in the African-American community, pro-life community? Absolutely. Uh, we're being invited more now than we have ever in our ministry. And we were busy before, but oh my goodness, it's as if God is mm -hmm. moving in such a big way that I, I'm almost running out of room on the calendar mm -hmm. now going from one event to the next. And so I'm so excited. We're getting calls from uh, black pastors that say, hey, Walt, when is the next time you're gonna have that, you know, underground railroad, you mm -hmm. know, right. and can we come? We wanna be a part of that. So a lot of good things are happening. Walter, who is some of the other leaders, cutting edge leaders that come to mind for you from the African American community, female or male? Well, I, I, I can tell you, I need to give a, a, a shout out to Dr. Hunter. Oh my goodness. Johnny Hunter. Johnny Hunter, Johnny mm -hmm. Hunter yeah. uh, Pastor Stephen Broden, yeah. and LeVon Yule. Those are probably the three patriarchs of the black pro-life movement. Mm -hmm. So I want to give them a shout out. I love Dr. Clenar Childress. Oh my goodness. New Jersey mm -hmm. guy, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love him. I want to say hello to Katherine Davis, yes. uh, Star Parker, and I've got to put my arms around Dr. Alveda King. Yes, Amen. beautiful, Amen. beautiful. God has raised them up for a time such as this. Yes. I mean, and running with those people is running with the horses. Duh. I mean, you are out there and they're doing great things, but now we just need, like you said, it's like people are responding just more and more and more so the church can get healed and restored. You think the percentage numbers are going up within the African-American community overall? regarding those who are identifying as pro-life and being more uh, dedicated to it and letting it influence their outlook on life and maybe even their politics. And is it growing? Yeah, it, it is growing, but it's not going fast enough for, for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. The impact in my community is huge. I mean, when you consider the 13 leading causes of death in my community, abortion outstrips all 13, mm -hmm. all Combined. of them. We're mm -hmm. talking about heart disease, cancer, stroke, all 13 together. Abortion is still more. So there's still a lot more work for us to do. Mm -hmm. Walter Hoy, thank you so much for making time to uh, be with us. You are a great encouragement. God bless your precious wife, Lori, your children. It's Walter Hoy, CEO, Issues, the number four life foundation. Go to issues number four life.org. Especially maybe you've tuned in today, you're an African American and you're saying, wow, that, that just really sets my heart ablaze with what I'm hearing. I want to have fellowship with people like this. I want to make uh, a weekend or several days like he's been speaking about. Get in touch with Walter Hoy. Read the book, Black and Pro-Life in America, The Incarceration and Exoneration of Walter B. Hoy. Have no doubt about it, the outcome is assured. Life, marriage, and the family will prevail. Keep it on EWTN and know that you're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now.